Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're talking about Badger Loop. I recently did a video um, discussing various Hyperloop pod competition teams and I neglected to remember that Badger Loop had already revealed their pod some time ago. This is a really great summary video of their experience in building the pod this year. I would highly recommend you watch it. There's a lot of good interviews from team members and what they felt, what they experienced, what they learned, and you know how they built their pod. So I'd highly recommend you watch this um, this video from Badger Loop, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them at SpaceX. Another team, Hyper Ed from Edinburgh University in Scotland, revealed their pod, the Flying Podsman, which is a play on words from the Flying Scotsman, which is a train that goes from London to England to Edinburgh. And really awesome uh, that they're at it again. Of course, um, Hyper Ed had a spin off company um, about last year called Continuum Industries, and they are working on Hyperloop Logistics. So, congratulations. Edinburgh for um, revealing their pod. Next is Midwest Hyperloop. I had a hard time finding their website the other day, so I reached out to them directly on Twitter, which you can do to a lot of these Hyperloop pod competition teams and just ask them really good questions, um, technical and whatnot. Um, so I'd highly recommend you reach out to and interact with these Hyperloop uh, teams. They have great uh, media um, workers and stuff. So um, really glad to see that uh, Midwest Hyperloop is working very hard over the summer building their pod. Check out their Instagram page, which has some behind the scenes where they're assembling the pod at Purdue University. So good job. Um, next, we're going to go to a TEDx uh, talk on building the Hyperloop by Deborah Navarro. And she is a part of Gator Loop Hyperloop pod competition team. And they had a really interesting pod the first couple of years that was air bearing. So they had compressed air tanks and the pod would levitate. Well, she's uh, using this idea to have kind of a startup book called Airlev. Airlev. And Airlev is a company based on researchers from MIT and the University of Texas who've all come together. And we've built these air levitation systems that could be used for hyperloop vehicles or they could be used in the present to move goods. And our long-term vision is having these Hyperloop stations that we could access. And I think about how life would have been if I was a kid and I could board onto a Hyperloop station and suddenly be taken to a metropolitan area far, far away. Imagine all of the opportunity that that would unlock. And what's so important to me is we're also inspiring and empowering other engineers. So we've created these Hyperloop hubs at the University of Texas and at MIT. These students are using Airlev's air levitation systems for the latest Hyperloop vehicle that they're building. And I'm proud to say that they are in our shoes and they're currently in the final round for the Hyperloop pod competition that's taking place this summer. So that's really cool um, that they're trying to um, use air and um, not magnets uh, for their pods. So congratulations and give that um, TEDx talk uh, watch. Um, it's really cool um, how Deborah goes um, into getting back the time uh, and making more uh, a mindful transportation experience um, with their startup. Next, um, we're going to switch gears to uh, Hyperloop One, version Hyperloop One. Uh, they were at the um, Aspen Institute Ideas and this was an interesting question about um, autonomous vehicles versus Hyperloop. Do you really need a Hyperloop if you have autonomous vehicles? So let's listen. There are uh, aspects of the system that um, they just can't go as fast as you can, basically. Yeah, I mean, from my answer, it's uh, even in a world of autonomous cars, which I would love, I still care about how long it takes me to get there. But you build, you design cities with some of your master plans, so. Yeah, I think all of these different technologies, uh, modes of transportation are complementing e each other. So you would always have an airport. Uh, the, the Hyperloop system is, is limited. You can't fly across big uh, oceans. So y you would still need airports. Uh, maybe the Hyperloop would, would uh, be sort of uh, connected all the way out to the airport. But it's, and 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 the, the the where the 
the parts are popping out into the, the city fabric, at that point you probably need a car to get there. So, and, and maybe some of these uh, autonomous uh, uh, helicopters or drones uh, could, could, could uh, pick you up at those spots and take you somewhere. So in a way, I think all of these new technologies are working together to reduce the time that it takes you from getting to from A to B anywhere in the world. Yeah, so um, it's kind of like an onion. You need all the other layers of transportation layers to make the whole thing work. Um, why invest in Hyperloop technology? Let's just give this a listen. looking at something far in the future, so bumps along the road aren't a big deal. But from an investor standpoint, it's a really interesting mix. You have kind of strategic investors like Virgin, like DP World. Virgin doesn't... DP World is big port yeah. runner, runner yep. out of Abu Dhabi. And they're looking at moving, instead of just moving boxes, moving higher up in the logistics chain. How can you own a better, you know, widget, if you will, which is getting your goods or your cargo from one place to another faster. Virgin would be an operator, just like they don't build Boeing planes or Airbus planes, they operate them, they would be an operator for us. From an investor point of view, people with, with patient capital. So somebody who's not looking for an exit in two years, somebody who's not looking for a small like number of things, but looking at something of a transformative nature that will take something like 10 years. And, yeah. and if you look at, you know, I worked for a time at SpaceX, and they're going from, I'll say, garage in roughly 2000, 2002, to putting astronauts in 18 to 20 years later. We're four and a half years old. We're trying to go from a garage to grandma's in 10. Yeah. And that's a different type of thing. It's a very different, I'll say, investor profile than someone's used to having an IPO 24 months after starting a company. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you can watch the entire um, video on YouTube, uh, just search for Hyperloop uh, from the Aspen Institute, and um, let's just give a quick listen to this. And you have you can't you know open up your laptop because uh, you know that that's off limit uh, during that time. So, so but but uh, if we then start from from scratch, um, we were saying uh, you should have the opportunity to have a meeting in there. You should have the opportunity to lounge in and, and do what you need to do. There, there should be a quiet... The design uh, process for building because a hyperloop the, system or pod. The next one, the family pod, leaves uh, 10 seconds later. So, so, so it's it, the opportunity that is offered here, because you don't have to wait half an hour for the next train or mm -hmm. half a day for the next plane, is that you can create each of these parts individually and tailor them to your specific needs. Um, and that, that and may, maybe that comes with a premium if you want sort of a, a luxury part that uh, and we've seen a couple of these renders that Virgin has released about um, they do look very luxurious um, very cool very futuristic um, but it's like you know that mindfulness that you get back in transportation you don't really think of mindfulness in transportation but um, making it a little bit more uh, human <laughs> So switching gears to government, um, today, uh, or sorry, um, today's the day, stop by the Rayburn building in DC to learn more about our technology and progress with um, mid uh, central Ohio, the official transportation department um, Twitter account, the uh, Southern Nevada, the St. Louis Regional Chamber and the Kansas City uh, Tech Council on Hyperloop. So this was kind of a, a reveal that a Virgin Hyperloop One goes to the Capitol presenting uh, their technology and government partnerships and viable routes across the U.S. Um, what was interesting is that um, they're kind of starting a road trip um, giving different governments and different um, transportation departments kind of a behind the scenes look at how they want to work with government and partner with uh, all these various levels of governments in local and regional and federal um, and how they envision the hyperloop being built very quickly um, across all of these. So um, they kicked off in DC presentations about federal stakeholders um, they claim that the technology could transport passengers and goods three times as fast as regular travel. Um, they want to uh, 
uh, build off of momentum from U.S. Secretary of Transportation Eileen Chow's newly formed non-traditional and emerging te transportation technology NET Council um, to support new and innovative transportation projects like hyperloops and self-driving cars. Um, by working closely with federal partners to implement uh, technologies like Hyperloop, the Midwest Connect Corridor could knit together a mega region from Chicago to Columbus to Pittsburgh. Um, the vision of the NET Council is to develop and establish department-wide processes, solutions, and best practices to identify and manage non-traditional and emerging transportation uh, technologies and projects to provide assistance to local and state governments um, and to conduct research to better understand the safety and regulatory needs of these technologies. Because when uh, Hyperloop One first revealed uh, their uh, global challenge um, uh, winners, a lot of them were from the United States, and each Department of Transportation was scrambling to kind of assess and test um, if uh, the technology of Hyperloop would work in their state. Um, and quickly it became obvious that this should be done at the federal level, so um, time, resources, and monies wouldn't have to be spent locally, um, you know, at the tra local transportation department. Um, so yeah, the one thing we don't really see is mention of Colorado. We do see it on uh, Virgin Hyperloop One's website, but not really here in this press release. But Dallas Fort Worth uh, Regional Transportation Council has launched a Hyperloop feasibility study for Fort Worth to a Laredo route and environmental impact study along the Dallas to Fort Worth corridor. The Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission is conducting a feasibility study of Hyperloop and technology along the Columbus um, Chicago Columbus Pittsburgh corridor and following followed by components of an environmental impact statement along the same route the Missouri Hyperloop coalition has released results from its first Hyperloop feasibility study in the US which confirmed the viability of st. Louis to Kansas City and Nevada's Hyperloop test site the dev loop continues as an active site and the organizations are uh, also currently have projects. So Hyperloop One still working in India and United Arab Emirates with DP World. Um, yeah, so finally we're starting to see, you know, federal, um, you know, work to develop full-scale Hyperloop. Um, and this is their website, uh, transportation.gov slash net council, non-traditional emerging transportation technologies, identifying and resolving jurisdictions and regulatory gaps that may impede the de deployment of new technologies such as tunneling, boring company, Hyperloop, uh, <laughs> and autonomous vehicles like space, uh, Tesla robocars and other innovations. The US dot, um, consists of 11 operating administrations, each with its own traditional jurisdiction over certain environmental and regulatory approvals. New technologies may not always fit precisely in the department's existing regulatory structure, potentially resulting at a slower place of transportation innovation. I guess you could consider SpaceX's uh, star hop, starship um, transportation around the world um, as one of these net council ideas. Um, inventors and investors approach uh, uh, US Department of Transportation to obtain necessary safety authorization permits and funding and often face uncertainty on how to coordinate with the department. The Net Council will address these challenges by ensuring that the traditional model silos, silos at the Department of Transportation do not impede the deployment of new technology. Furthermore, it will give project sponsors a single point of access to discuss plans and proposals. That's huge. Um, this is their uh, charter document, um, council charter. Uh, it's pretty bland, um, but non-traditional uh, safety, environmental, and funding, um, as well as resolving jurisdiction and regulatory gaps. Um, and it's also going to coordinate the department's internal oversight of these projects and outside engagement with project stakeholders and develop and establish department-wide processes with internally at the Department of Transportation. Um, the membership, the Secretary of Transportation, Deputy Secretary of Transportation is the chair, um, Under Secretary of Transportation for Policy, uh, General Counsel, Chief Information Officer, 
Assistant Secretary of Research to Technology, Assistant Secretary of Budget and Programs, Administrators for the Next Senior from FAA, Federal Highway Administration, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, Federal Railroad Administration, Federal Transit Administration, Maritime, National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety. Additional members may be added at the description of the chair. Um, and the Director of P Office of Public Affairs, so a PR person, and the Assistant Secretary of Government Affairs. Cool, so um, not much more really to understand from an outside perspective. Um, there's gonna be working groups and meetings. Um, yeah, and it just kind of finally, uh, this order was effective December 11th, 2018, so it got started um, in 2018 in December. So that's kind of it. Um, there's been a lot of developments. We're still um, keeping 